So in the time while we uh, get out from Pol Pot regime, we are under the communists. So the education, they don't mind whether you are disability or not disability, you, you can join with the private school, uh, uh, with the public school. So I got a chance to study. And in the time, you know, like many, uh, while I in the school, a lot of my friends, they teach, they teach me, they imitate my, the way of, of I'm walking. And I, I was crying because I feel like it's a shame of someone to imitate my, the way of I'm walking. So I feel very insulted by some of my friends because they are young as well. But I feel like I, I cannot blame them, you know, because I feel I, I, they, not, they might not learn, they might not understand about the feeling or they might not understand about what insult people. And most of people are just get out of the war, so they feel like while we walk not straight, it's a kind of funny. They try to follow and they try to imitate the way we are walking. So I feel what a bad situation in the life. So I try to make my, I try to confident myself and we try to make friends with them. And sometimes uh, they treat me very badly and I feel like is it a kind of discrimination? But I don't know, but I always stand up in front of the mirror and I look my, the way I'm, I'm walking and I ask myself whether it's a funny way of walking in this way. So and I only can give my answer like if we want to live this society, we must adjust ourselves. So I try to adjust myself and try to make friends with them and then even though they're teaching me, I like, say, oh, you, your way of walking is very funny, but I say, okay, that's fine. It, it might be your freedom of laughing, but I, for my, since I was small, I always think like, why don't we have one society understand about disability? So that's why in my mind, I always asking about freedom of mind, freedom of living as other citizen. So in 1990, I was finished high school. In, while I was finished high school, I want to become a lawyer. So I applied to be a lawyer, and in the time, Cambodians are very discriminated. You can, uh, disability cannot become a lawyer or a teacher, because they say like the civil servant must have a good physical. And every job announcement is a physical condition. So even apply for university study, they said no, cannot. So I was wasting my time again. Uh, so 1990, I, I finished high school. So until 1997, I got a job. So seven years of my disability, I cannot work, I cannot study. So I just go to live with my brother and go to, I learn how to do Golden Smith and also learn some English. And I dream, you know, like, I can hold 100 US dollars in my hand while I see my sister receive the salary from other organization. I said, that money should be belong to me too because I am, I can have ability to do the same as other. Why the society not open the opportunity for me? That question always happened in my mind and I said, I never, I cannot give up my study and I have to, I work for my brother for the whole day uh, from morning until five o'clock. So 5 o'clock to 6 or 7 o'clock, I went to study uh, English at private school. And my father always tell me, the society will change. So if you keep working, keep working hard with good knowledge, you will have opportunity. So his word remind me a very good, word, a good future. So in 1994, he was passed away because of chronic disease uh, in the Pol Pot regime. He was fought work very hard, so in 1994 he was passed away and I feel I lost one of my hands. And I feel, who support me, you know, like, in Cambodia, even though you are over 18 years old, you still be rely on your parent. Because you have no job, even you have a job, the culture of Cambodian really support you. The parent and the kid really listen to the family. So they cannot make their own choice or the government didn't provide anything to you if you don't do a good thing for yourself. So in 1994, he passed away. I feel my life is gone. It's end because of no one support me, no one empower me, no one encourage me to do something. And then I still go to work for my brother. And in 1997, uh, I was asked to be a, for, uh, like 
furniture seller for my brother and I met one foreigner she ran in front of my shop and I said just say good morning uh, she came in and then she asking me oh you got disability why don't you apply for a job and I said no disability in Cambodia are not allowed to, to do a job or apply for school she said no now city of Cambodian disabled people organization already set up in 1994 so this is I want to conf uh, to stress like Access of information also very poor. You see, CDO set up in 1994, and then I am disability. I don't know CDO was formed up. So that I, I got a name card from her. She said, "Okay, take my name card and then go to CDO office. You might have a job." She, she, she used the word "might have a job," and then I took her name card with a very happy atmosphere and feeling. I said, "Wow, it is good." So I took I I don't change my clothes at all. I, I wore very bad clothes to city Bo office. In the time, the guard not let me get into city Bo. They said, I, my clothes so bad, you cannot get in city Bo. I said, wow, it's the organization of people with disabilities. Why you discriminate? I talked to the guard. My guard now is still my guard now. He said, no, because they are work, work very busy. You cannot go to disturb them. I said, well, I want to look for a job. And even the guard said, oh, you, you got a very bad clothes like that. How can you get a job? I said, yes. That's why I want to ask him whether they got opportunity or not. So while I talked with the guard, the advisor came down. She said, oh, that, that young man is coming. So she welcomed me and to meet with the administrator. The administrator said, yeah, we are the organization of people with disability. But unfortunately, we already employ all people. And there's no job available in CDPO. But there is one organization called NCDP. National Center of Disabled Persons. Uh, they, they are recruit the staff now. They just form up the organization and they just recruit the staff. So I said, wow, can you send me there? And they gave me the address. So I came back. I um, ran very quickly to National Center of Disabled Persons. And while I went there, there was, in the time there was a Filipino was an executive director in that organization. As he looked like Cambodian, as he used wheelchair. While well, I get there, I, I suppose it's Khmer. She said, Suasaday, like the word hello. I said, yes, Suasaday. I make fun with her back. <laughs> so she asking, she speak English with me. She said, oh, how did you come here? Why did you come here? I said, I come here looking for a job. She looked me from the bottom to the top. She said, what? You looking for a job? I said, yes. What happened? I said, you clothes so dirty. Your shoes so, so dirty. I said, if you give me a job, I promise I can buy new clothes, I can buy new shoes. So there's no strength. I said, yes, you are so brave, she said like that. I said, thank you for your appreciate me. <laughs> and she laughed, she said, okay, good. So give me your CV. In 1997, I said, no, what, what means CV? She said, again, you see, your body very bad, your clothes very bad, and then your shoes very bad, and then you don't know how to, how to, how, what does CV mean? I said, yeah. I can, I can learn how to do it if you teach me how to do CV. So she laughed. I said, you see, even CV, you don't know how you can you get a job. I said, let teach me. I'm a very quick learner, so I can do CV. So she said, well, we don't promise you you get a job, but we will ask our administrator to teach you how to do CV or to fill the CV. <laughs> so in the time, she asked me to fill the CV and complete the CV. And then we had to apply, and I, I, I had to go back, went back home, and I do my work at, for my brother again. So next week, they called me for interview. Because of my background with a good English and my background with business, I was elected uh, to be the cafe supervisor, like a restaurant for people with disability. And they have, they're asking me to volunteer for one month, because I have no experience at all about community or work uh, with other people. So I, I, I'm happy to work. And my mom was a Khmer noodle seller. She sell the noodle and gave me the money for survive myself. Because all of my brother and sister are married. Except me in 1997, I'm not yet married. And then we, I work for a full-time job. And I start to ask myself, if I keep working like this every time and every day, in the same job like this, I cannot improve my life. And my reason is I want to change society. 
I said I want to see the society change and policy maker change so that all people with disability in Cambodia could join freely and discrimination and barrier and get out, take out from in front of our face.